when do you start the process of planning for this draft? The decision on who you pick uh, into the organization is on draft night. But that player was picked a long time ago. It started with the summer looks, it started with the fall, it started with the in-home visits. It starts with washing that player through analytics and video scouting. So it is scouting the whole player throughout the whole year. So it's a huge, huge process. We're, we're only good uh, as our area scouts are. My name is Cesar Aaron Gurren. I'm a Southeast Regional Supervisor for the New York Mets. This is my 10th year covering South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Puerto Rico. The first year as Regional Supervisor and the uh, previous nine years as the Area Supervisor in South Florida. We're starting the day after draft day ends. So there's summer tournaments, there's summer leagues, all kinds of events that we start to build our pool of players that we're going to be looking at over the course of the next 365 days. Our focus is the 2022 draft. That's what we're working for right now, but there's sophomores, freshmen, players that are eligible for next year or the following year. We focus on them as well. So we, we're not scouting these guys only their draft year. We're scouting these guys for years at a time. In the summer, you get some long days. In the spring, it's usually more targeted towards one, two, games a day, but there still are events where you'll get more than that. Sometimes you're bouncing from one place to another, you're bouncing from one town to the next to see two different players or three different players, you know, hopping on a plane to see another player on, on the same day. It could get a little chaotic. Our staff does a tremendous job of communicating all the ins and outs of, of scheduling, of starts, of injuries, of cancellations, of time changes, weather, all of that stuff. So. As chaotic as it might sound, it's organized chaos. And we do a great job of it. Without that communication, it'd be impossible to do what we do. You're almost cross-checking each other. The analytics cross-checks the scouts, the scouts cross-check the analytics, the medical people, um, and so on. We, have, we do other tests um, on some of these players, and all of that goes into every decision. So we're, we try, I hope we are, I think we're trying to, even to be more thorough. We're always looking for new ideas. I think this staff has a growth mindset, not a closed mindset. So for, and I think we're always trying to, what's the edge? I remember asking our scouts this year, as, as the analytics keep going and trying to gain the edge, what is the next edge in the scouting department from our aspect? Let's, let's group think this and see what we come up with and what, what can we do to be ahead of, ahead of the rest of the teams. And so we're, I think that's something that we do really well as a staff is we're always, we want to engage everybody to give us the best ideas that we can going forward. You know, our, our scouting director and our VP, Mark Tremita and Tommy Tainis, um, they've done a great job building the staff and, and getting this to work as a well-oiled machine where everybody's working really hard, everybody knows what they got to do, and we all kind of work together towards the same goal. We have these Zoom calls every Monday morning and about 45 minutes to just catch us up. Let us know what's going on. What have you heard? What are the rumblings going on? Are there any injuries? Who's trending up? Who's trending down? Top guys in your area, what are they doing? How are they playing? How are they performing? You know, any kind of vital information to our decision-making process. Finding the perfect player, it's, it's tough. Uh, I don't know if there is one out there. Sometimes you'll find one that's pretty close. It takes a long time to see a kid at 16, 17, 18 years old. Sometimes they make it easy for you to say, this is gonna be a really good Major League Baseball player. Sometimes they make it a lot more difficult. Sometimes there's a lot of pieces missing to the puzzle, but you get an idea of what they can be. It's kind of like educated guesswork, you know, and you're using your knowledge base and your history, your role decks of players that you've seen over the years to kind of put together an idea of what this player can be down the road. It's definitely not an exact science, but in a way we're kind of applying science to it. With all the developments in technology and analytics especially, we're applying all these things to help us make more informed decisions. Technology is giving us the access to video, to data that we never had before. Analysts, our analytics department, they're taking all this data and information that we have to help us make more informed decisions. So that's part of it, and then you're always, you know, staying alert to what else you can pick up throughout the course of the game, whether it be something that he does on the field, whether it be something that he does at the plate or on the mound, 
or even something that he does in the dugout and the way he interacts with his teammates and interacts with his coaches. You know, you're always trying to pick up something that'll give you a little bit of an edge on the player and, uh, and more information on the player for that matter. As the scout and more specifically the area scout, you're kind of like the face of the New York Mets to that player. You're the first person that they meet in the New York Mets organization. And then a few months later, you draft them, you sign them, and you know they associate the New York Mets with you, with the area scout. You build that relationship and you're watching box scores every day. You know, once the minor league season starts, you're as excited to watch the major league box score as you are the Binghamton box score or the Brooklyn box score or the Syracuse box score. I watch Mark, I watch Sapucky, all of his starts, I'm always on top of him. Pete Alonzo was signed by John Updike, but you know, I scouted him when he was in high school. Obviously, keep track of him. A new rookie single season home run kick. It, it's fun to see these guys. It's fun to keep track of them and, and see them having success. And it gives you a little bit of pride. You know, you had a part in signing the player and it's not me by myself by any means whatsoever. It is the entire department that signed every player and you root for them. You know, individually you root for them amongst rooting for the entire club. And when you see all the work that you did play out on a on the TV game, you know, we call it the TV game, and eventually helping you get to a World Series, like, that's huge, you know, it feels good. We come into this draft room with a competitive nature, we wanna beat 29 other clubs in this draft room. So it, it's so many different emotions, and it's, you know, a, common, a culmination of 365 days of work, and more than, more so in, in a lot of aspects. And you finally get to see the fruits of your labor, and you finally get to, compete and win a draft and you know make some players dreams come true and start the process and start the journey of getting a player to the major leagues and getting him to help you win a World Series. There's times throughout the year where you just can't wait for it to come. There's down times in the season, there's more uh, chaotic times in the season, but you always have this day in the back of your mind, the day that you walk into draft night, you know, we're all in here, all the cameras and the big board is set up and it's, it never gets old. It's going to be my 10th year doing it and it never gets old. It's exciting every single time. The New York Mets select 